Hi, my name is Isa Guchardi, and I'm the founding director of the Foundation of the Sacred Stream, a school for consciousness studies in Berkeley, California. There, I, I'm an author, and I'm also a teacher. And I teach a counseling process called depth hypnosis, which I developed. And that process tends to attract teaching professionals, counseling professionals, general healthcare professionals, people who are in service, because it has so many excellent methods of helping people stay out of burnout as they are in the process of healing others. And I teach a class as part of the program called The Path of Service, where we really go deeply into understanding our intentionality as we engage with others. And in this class, I'd like to just take a moment to highlight some of the most important elements of the Path of Service class so that you can begin to see the promise beyond burnout. So I think that we all know that those of us that are in the nonprofit world are often on the, on the front lines of dealing with this collective calamity that we are all facing. And we all have different ways in which we do that. Some of us are involved with eco-justice. Some of us are involved with social justice. And some of us are often just trying in our own way to reverse the effect of this terrible war against the natural environment and the social environment that has been going on for far too long. And, you know, as we are engaging in this fight, um, we find ourselves in a state of distress. I mean, that's one of the reasons why most of us are drawn into trying to do something different. Uh, trying to change things, because we are in this state of distress. And, and we are in that state of distress as we try to set about making things better. But because of this distress, we can often lose track of our own personal situation. And we're so focused outward, right? And not infrequently, we don't even realize that we're burning out. And if we do, we just try to deny it or overcome it or just, you know, pretend that, you know, it's not happening and we just continue doing what we are doing and continue to exhaust ourselves further. And um, often one of the things that happens is that we give too much of ourselves and we do this in an effort to make things better, but we often find that no matter how much we give, that things are not improving in the way that we had hoped. And, um, you know, it's hard to keep the long term, the long view, when you're feeling like things need to change now, right? So all of this leads to burnout, or it can lead to burnout for some people. And, um, that, and often people find themselves unable to continue in doing the thing that gave them so much meaning. And for me, this is a, a very, for me, that's my distress, is when I see people who have such positive intention, who want so much to make a change, who have work, been working so hard doing what they knew to do to make change, and they feel distressed at not having made the change they wanted to make. So what I try to do is help people readjust so that they can stay in the game a little bit longer and so that they can enjoy doing the change that they long to, that they long to affect. And, um, and so what I'd like to do in this talk is go over some best strategies that will help us not only understand how we can better make the change we want to make, but will help us learn how to take care of ourselves as we are trying to take care of others in a more effective way. So how are we going to do this? Well, one of the things we're going to do is looking at strengthening our connection to inner guidance. And then we're going to learn how to follow that inner guidance while meeting the demands of the external world in a new way. And then we're going to examine our core beliefs about service 
and also our core beliefs about sacrifice. Because I think for many of us, those two things are paired in a not so helpful way. And um, we're going to also look at understanding what our own needs are and remembering how to hold on to our own needs, even as we are seeking to fulfill the needs of another. And we're also going to learn how to approach service generally from a more resourced place. So you have wisdom and skillful means. And so in, in, in more simple terms, we have our intention and the way that we execute it. And those two things need to be in concert with one another. And often what I have seen in the years that I have spent, the decades that I have spent in educating bodhisattvas in training is that they have a lot of good ideas about how they want to change things and they see the problem and they see the change that's possible, but they kind of had misunderstandings about how to make that change. <laughs> and they often kind of get themselves tied up in knots. And my specialty actually as a teacher is helping people perceive those knots and unwind them so that we can help them get back out on the line and fight the good fight, right? So, or enjoy and not fight the good fight. You don't have to be engaged in battle, but most people who are on the path of service find themselves really trying to persist in the face of really overwhelming odds. So it can feel like a, it can feel like a battle. Um, so, but in any case, the, the important thing is to look at how you are perceiving what you are perceiving and look at how you are executing based on that information. What is your level of wisdom and what is your level of skillful means? And so these are big questions. These are big changes that we may actually need to make or we may just need to tweak a little bit. But in any case, most of us can't do this on our own. Most of us need to develop some inner resourcing, some inner teaching to be able to help us make the changes that we want to make so that we can stay the long course and so that we can provide the service that we long to provide.